guys, this is Shinobi 3 for the Sega Genesis, we're at Hero Pentagon, supporting Flatter V and Revolution to go to SGDQ 2017. Uh, I'll be performing this game on Expert, uh, that's just the category, and uh, we'll be starting very soon. So uh, on my count, 3, 2, 1, go. Here we go. The first stage is a lot of execution. There aren't many many tricks or anything to it. Um, I'm going to be performing a little bit of a click glitch at the end of the stage. It's merely just for sh just for show. Uh, it's not it's not in any way like it doesn't make the game faster. It's just cool to see. So give me a second. Let me see. There we go. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Okay. So sometimes it won't work. So if you clip the second box in a couple of boxes, it gives Joe. Uh, the hero of the game, no clip for about five seconds, and you're able to just clip through enemies. It's pretty cool. I'll be using it again in a later stage where it actually will work this time. All right, so if you stand right here, the boss won't hit you. We'll proceed. All right, here's the second stage of level one. Uh, same thing, just tight execution. There aren't many uh, tricks to this stage. As you can see, I'm going to be doing a lot of dive kicking to make sure that I'm on the ground. Running is the fastest method of movement in the game. Anytime you jump, you actually lose a bit of frames, so you don't want to jump too much. With these enemies, as long as they're on screen, uh, they'll just attack, and that's you know that's important because when they, when they attack, that's when they become uh, vulnerable. So when you do a double jump and you press your attack button, you can do a burst. I'll be using that a little bit later. It's a very, very cool thing they added in the game. And here's the first boss. He's extremely hard. Just give me a moment. I gotta concentrate. Alright, we're good. And that is level one. Second stage is a little bit of an auto, auto or sorry, stage one, level two, a little bit of an auto scroller. We're gonna be collecting a lot of kunai. If you use kunai to kill the enemies in this stage, it's not it's not a big thing at all. It's fine. Uh, but what you, else you can do, which is interesting, is you can dive kick with the horse, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. You can also slash them with your melee. It, with the, if Joe is within range of an enemy, as you saw previously in the other stage. Uh, Joe will just use his sword simply, or just his melee attack rather. If you don't have your power up, which is something I picked up a little bit earlier in the stage and previously, um, then he's just going to slash normally. So the power difference between a not powered up shot and a powered up shot is three kunai. It's pretty substantial. So as, as if you could tell throughout the run, I'm going to try not to get hit, or at least I'm going to be calculating my hits. So, in this stage, I don't want to get hit. Alright, so, I have about 79 kunai, as you can see. Not a bad idea. Uh, it's a good number. It's good to have a cushion of kunai to work with. Alright, so here's the mini boss for stage 1. Uh, I'm going to be attempting a quick kill in a sec. Alright, so I get it. That's good. Uh, what happens is he goes out of the stage, comes back in. You lose a little bit of time if you have to do it that way, but it's fine. So this is the first part of stage two. We just want to simply avoid these enemies. Unfortunately, they're not smart enough to turn around. If you wait around, they will, but they won't. And here's another a little bit of an auto-scroller bit. Uh, we're just going to be collecting kunai just like the previous. Avoiding enemies, making sure we keep our power up. These guys are not very happy that I'm here. That's okay. You, you know, you think about it, it's like ninjas are supposed to be stealthy. They come in, you, they're not supposed to be, you know, noticed by anybody. But Joe here, I just doesn't care. He simply does not care. So moving right along. We simply just, as I said previously, we just want to avoid enemies. We can make it as flashy as possible. You know, slash them in the face. We can, you know, dive kick them. 
throw kunai at them, do anything you want, just take out the enemies, make sure you don't get hit. So that box right there is a bomb. I don't wanna I don't wanna blow it like open that up. And here's a power up right here. I already had one, but it's good to know. By the way, so the elevator can go through, you know, what you can see right here, but Joe surely can't. He gets smushed. It doesn't make very much sense. But don't do it. Go around. Alright, so we're nearing the end of this segment. A little bit of a wall kick action here. And we perform one of the most satisfying kills in the game. There you go. Alright, so you see these lines in the middle of the, the track, of the elevator. The second one in here is where we want to do a wall kick. And it gets us to the boss faster. So, hold on. Oh man, I didn't think I was going to do that. The bosses, man, are so hard. Alright, so this is body weapon. There's a lot going on in the stage. Uh, back when I had bad internet, it was a bitrate killer, or a stream killer, I don't know what you call it. So right here is another box clip, as uh, described in the first level. As you can see, we clipped through those enemies, and also we despawned the last, I don't know what you want to call them, honestly. But yeah, we despawned them. And here's a little bit of tight execution. And moving on. That was a good segment. So we're going to take damage right here because it's faster, but the game doesn't know what to do for some reason and doesn't deplete any of my health. It's a weird way of distributing damage. However, the game does know I took damage because I don't have my power up anymore, but I just picked another one up just there. Alright, so there's a wall clip. As soon as you hear Joe's audible noise, you want to hold the attack button and then press the opposite direction you want to go to. Joe clips through the wall. The reason why we want to do it up here, like face the boss up here instead of down there, you actually take advantage of uh, loads, which is interesting. Alright, so there we go. See? The fanfare played the cut. And this area. So, as you can see from the back, that is the boss, that is the Hydra. Take your pictures now, because you won't be seeing this boss again. Even though, you know, we're, we're about to go face him. But, we won't be seeing him at all. And you'll find out in just a moment why. So immediately upon entering, you use a ninjutsu. Oh, just explaining, this ninjutsu expends a life. So as you see, I have one life instead of two now. What's interesting about this ninjutsu, so J Joe explodes, like destroys everything on screen or does a significant amount of damage to bosses. Uh, it also it also will refill your life if you're low. Because you basically expended a life to get life. It's interesting. And here's everyone's favorite song in this game. This is Whirlwind. Surf Ninjas, what up? So this stage is I mean, obviously, it's auto-scroller, so given in its nature, you're going to be collecting a lot of kunai. However, this is one of the more dangerous ones. So, the, the ninjas on the jet bikes, I don't know what you want to call them, uh, hover bikes, etc. So whenever they come from the background or the foreground, it's not on a fixed timer, and it's dependent on where Joe is in the screen, or at least uh, a friend of mine and I, uh, S.Strider, so we kind of figured that, like being closer to the screen or close to the middle rather, rather, will bring them out faster. We can't really figure out why. Um, but the, here's the thing: you gotta like kind of move back and forth. Doesn't really make sense. So standing back too far is not a really good thing. And the reason why is because this next jump, uh, you want to make sure that they're going to be coming out soon, so you can. There you go. So as you saw, I kind of, you know, move forward, move back, and forward. 
that brought out that one enemy much faster than had I just stood right where I'm at. There's an extra life, and upcoming stage one boss. In terms of health, this boss is a real tank. It's a good thing we have our power up. I'm going to be using a technique called rapid fire. Alright, so that was a really good kill. Explaining rapid fire a bit, you have to press attack and jump within three frames of each other. Very fast. Well, obviously within three frames it is fast, but yeah, just kind of explaining it's kind of exhausting to do. It's one of the more uncomfortable tricks to do in this game. So in this stage there isn't anything fantastic as far as uh, glitches or anything like that. It's just tight execution. It's a fun stage in my opinion. There are some enemies I do have to kill or they'll hit me. This is one of them. Alright, here's the leap of faith. It's not really a leap of faith. You just gotta it's a calculated jump. There's more of a leap of faith right here, actually. There we go. That jump. So you do have a little bit of a leeway to work with, but it's not very much. It's not a pixel perfect jump by any means, but it's still hard. Alright, so that was a good phase one of this boss. This boss in particular is interesting because there's a lot of lag you have to work with, so during these transition portions you do not want to be attacking or anything. You can move, just don't attack. Oh, alright, we're good. There we go. Alright, so I, I did a little bit too much rapid fire, caused a little bit more lag on the stage. And proceeding on. So here's Electric Demon 1. This stage as far as platforming is... Oh man, it's probably my least favorite. It's cool to watch though. But as far as executing, I do not like this stage. It can be a real pain. Ooh, god, that lag. It's another thing. There's a lot of lag in this stage. There we go, that's good. So if you uh, time your dive kick and hit an enemy just right, you can hit them without recoil. It's amazing. Alright, so here's some uh, well-timed kunai burst double jumps right here. That was actually really scary. That was a lot lower than I intended, but it worked out. Alright, sweet action. Upcoming is the boss. We want to use rapid fire. Flawless. There's a little bit of glitches on this stage. So we got a clip glitch right here, or a wall clip. Almost got the no recoil hit, but it's fine. Alright, as you can see, I did a double jump, bursted, turned around, yeah, I don't know. I actually just came up with that recently, and it saves a considerable amount of time, because the thing is, the, the bombs, they're on a timer, right? And if Joe is close to them, they'll count to zero really fast, but if you do what I did, you completely avoid that and just blow the bomb up immediately. Ooh, okay, we're fine. Normally I hit both of them. Oops. Alright, wall clip. There we go. Alright, so now we're... Oh, that's bad. That's fine. A little bit of a backup strat. So, we wanted to clip on the left side, but because I destroyed that box, Joe doesn't have enough height to actually like make that jump. Not a big deal. So proceeding on, I do have my power up. So going to so the top right, if you go, there is a power up over there. There's no point in getting it now, which is great. 
You're gonna see a familiar face with this boss. Everyone knows Godzilla, let alone Mega Godzilla. Alright, so we do use the ninjutsu right here. This boss is very luck dependent. You don't know what Mecha Godzilla is going to do, so you use your shield ninjutsu just to make kind of alleviate any type of bat. Uh, it's kind of bad. <laughs> Jeez, destroyed my shield. It's all right. We can use the jump slash. Ooh, that's bad. You don't want to get any type of like normal hit on this boss. You actually like lose time doing that. And that's Mecha Godzilla. Alright, so here's Traps, everyone's favorite casual stage, including my own. This is the only power-up you get right here, throughout this whole level, or sorry, stage. So if you die, uh, you gotta start at the very bottom. It's a significant time loss. If I'm not mistaken, say if you're at the very top and you die, like you're about to hit the boss of this stage, you lose about three minutes. So as you can tell in a speedrun sense, it's kind of a run killer. Well, sorry, if you die, that is. It's actually not as intense as it seems. It's just standard platforming, making sure that you kill the enemies before they hit you. And because it's an auto-scroller, you can, you can gauge when an enemy is going to come out. As you can see, I'm kind of killing these uh, flying ninjas before they come out. Or a little bit after, it just depends. I just want to make sure I don't get hit, because this up this upcoming boss, if you don't have a power-up, failing it's going to be hard. It's not that it takes a long time, it's just it's, it's annoying to take out. Some bosses you can get away with not having your power-up, as, you as you saw with uh, Mechagodzilla. And this is the last enemy. You can kind of breathe easy for a little bit. Even though we still don't, you know, want to fall. Extra life. I don't know why they put it there. And thought it was very challenging to get. It's not. <laughs> that rock actually has a lot of room to actually stand on. Another thing to note. Oh, here's the pebble of faith. Trust it. No one will trust you. Alright, so here's the last one. Anyways, as I was talking about, uh, you want to make sure that your double jumps are on point. There is a there is a timing to them. It's not extremely tight, but you just want to make sure that you, you can get it just right. So this guy is a bird man, as you can see. Fate, the, he has two phases, one where he goes into his feather form, second form where he goes into his uh, humanoid form. Or human-like form, I don't even want to call it. So if given enough time, he'll come to you and he'll swipe with his, his weapon, and you want to avoid that. It's not that it does a significant amount of damage, it's just, well, I mean, look where I'm at. If I get hit, I run the risk of falling, and if I fall, that's, that's bad. Alright, here's stage two of traps. The ninjas in here are a little bit random. You don't know if they're actually going to jump at you, stand, and do their thing, run, etc. Alright, so this area, kind of want to manipulate where these guys throw their shuriken. I didn't get the glitch, so you can get a glitch right there upon entering. It saves about a second. It's just a quick enter for this area. Alright. No repeats, thank goodness. Uh, on my previous PB, not the one last night, um, I actually accidentally did a wall clip right there, and it almost ended the run. It's pretty bad. So ceiling clips, as you can, well, you may not be able to tell, ceiling clips are much easier to do than uh, than wall clips because you don't have to require. It doesn't require too much uh, execution on that. Alright, so let's see if we get some good luck with this boss. Alright, that's good luck. 
So the best luck we can get for the second phase of this boss is if the boss comes out in the bottom left or the bottom right door. Top left and top right is second best, middle is third best. Alright, so we want him to do this again. Come out the middle door, come on. Alright, so that's fine. That's honestly the best uh, case scenario if the boss goes in the middle door. As you can tell as well, this boss kind of sucks during a speedrun. Some runs have actually been lost to that boss because of bad luck. Alright, so this is Final Confrontation. This is the final level of the game. And, as you can see, there's absolutely nothing preventing Joe from falling. Besides just... Alright, I'm gonna wait. I measured that wrong. You can jump over the, the steam. I want to destroy that. A little bit of time loss, it's fine. Actually, throwing your kunai to hit those is a little tight. But I was able to do it just fine. Alright, so interesting thing about this portion. So if you stand in the center of this elevator and time your jumps to avoid the cherries that these little turrets shoot at you, you'll be able to despawn some enemies. Makes it a little, a little bit easier on you. If you walk left and right, there are some drones that come out and they really wreck you. Thankfully we won't be seeing them, as long as we do exactly what I'm doing. Alright, so there's two on left side, one on right side. So by this pattern there should be two on right side, one on left side. But that's not what happens. So we're already despawning some enemies. And the next one should be two on the left side and two on the right side, but that's not the case. If you do walk left and right, may God have mercy on your soul, don't do it. Because everything's going to come at you at once, and you're probably going to get hit. It's not going to be a fun time. Alright, so in the green, little, like the, the green line, that's where you want to jump. Do a double jump, get up here faster. Well time double jumps can get you over these bullets right here. I don't know what you want to call them. Alright. Well timed kunai burst right here will save me. We're good. These do have to be killed. If you just try to run past them, they'll hit you. Wow. I've never timed it that well, that's amazing. That's amazing, wow, I've never done that before. Alright, so this is the second stage of Final, de Final Destination. Final Confrontation. As you can see again, the game didn't distribute damage correctly. I still have full health, which is great. And another thing to note is there are no enemies on this segment, besides obviously the final boss. This area can be a run killer, and you'll see why in just a moment. Well, hopefully you won't see why in just a moment, but I'll explain it. We're gonna be doing some. Uh, we're gonna be doing what's called the task clip, and this clip is very important to getting a good time in the run. It's not right here, but we don't want to. We don't want to wait for the platform. I know it's trying to be a bro, and it's like, hey got you. It's like, no, I got this. And you just leave it behind. Alright, dive kick, dive kick, jump slash. Alright, we're gonna actually fall. We're not gonna die. Because the game doesn't know what to do at that point. The game hasn't caught up with you. It's not fully loaded right there. And it just does what it thinks it has to do. Spawns you straight up. It's amazing. Alright, so I'll be needing this. Need a little bit of concentration. And we'll see. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. Got it. Whew. That is amazing. What's great about doing it this way, there's actually multiple ways to do this, but this is the most of most consistent way. Alright, so we do still have the ninjutsu, which is great. It means uh, traversing this, or sorry, scaling this is going to be easy.
Nice. That was that was good. All right, so I don't have my shield for this boss. Uh, There's just gonna be some. Uh, well, you'll see. So I have to hug the wall so the boss doesn't hit me in this first phase. Let's see if I can do it. Shit, that's bad. Uh, come on. Alright, so this is gonna be, uh, fun. Give me a second. Okay. Doing that consistently, rapidly, is really hard. But I was able to do it. Uh, ready on time? Time. Whew. 25, 20. That wore me out. Rapid fire is very uncomfortable, guys. Do not try at home. Alright, so that is Shinobi 3. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a very fun action platformer for the Sega Genesis. It's probably came on every single recent Nintendo system in the Wii Virtual Console shop. See so ya. Yeah, the battle has ended and Neo Zed has been halted. Alright guys, uh, that's it. Let's see. Alright guys, so next we have uh, Techie with uh, Silent Hill Homecoming. I uh, hope you guys stick around for that. And uh, as always, thank you for your continued support for Hero Pantathon. Let's uh, let's get Revolution and Flatter Vita SG here. Uh, thank you guys for having me, and uh, y'all have a good day.